So this is the matrix node. I will um, just kind of show you show you how to make one as well. And uh, we'll speak in a moment about about what it does. So by default, it asks you how big do you want the matrix node to be. Um, we'll we'll make it the default size three by three, and um, and then we'll see what is it that it, what does it actually do and and how does it actually work. Um, so basically, what the matrix node does is cross correlation. Um, quite often, people confuse it with convolution because it's a very very similar idea. But um, convolution just has one extra step. Um, for now, you can think of the, uh, both of them to be the same thing. Uh, but actually, what the matrix node does is, is cross correlation. So, but we, sometimes you hear people referring to this as convolution, and um, and they're not too wrong. It, it is very, 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 very similar to convolution. So. Uh, let's let's look at the matrix node and how does it actually work? What does it do? And then later we'll we'll see some kind of fun fun applications as well, because what you will find actually is that matrix node um, is is nothing 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 that magical, but um, but uh, it's still useful. So, anyways, initially when you make a matrix node, it does nothing. Um, in fact, I'm tempted to quickly drop my screen resolution to to be a little bit smaller just so that I can have a you can see it's slightly bigger how's that cool slightly bigger numbers for you guys there we are so um so initially the matrix node seems to do nothing so what do these numbers here represent what these numbers are is the current pixel and how it connects to the pixels around it. So in compositing, a lot of the operations that we do are, are known as pixel operations. So for example, when you do color correction, you could, for example, multiply a pixel's value by two, and then it will be twice, twice as bright. So, but you do it for every single pixel, individual pixel. So you do things for the pixel and for the color, but you don't necessarily do, you know, there's no dependency whether it, this pixel has anything to do with pixels around it. Whereas with the matrix node, we actually do those dependencies. So we link pixels with their neighbors. So, and this is what it does. So what this gives you here is a weighting of how much should this pixel's value be dependent on its surrounding pixel's values? And, um, and if you simply type in one in the middle in here, what it gives you is the original image. So if you type zero, I'm using no pixels from anywhere. If I'm using one for this current pixel, let's say this pixel in here, I'm just using its value and none of the values around it. So one example uh, that we could do is if I if I do another version of the same same one just next to it, and uh, let's do that. So let's see if this works. Nice. Connect this in here, and for this one, what we'll do is something else. Is instead of using this pixel's value, I will use the value of the pixel from the left. So if I do this one instead, so instead of using this middle pixel's value, I use the value of the pixel from the left. Then what will happen is that the whole image will move to the right. And you think like, wait, wait, what, what happened here? Well, basically what's actually happening is that I'm taking the pixel from the left and putting it to the middle. And by doing that, I'm moving everything to the right. So I'm moving everything to the right by one pixel. So this is a very inconvenient way, for example, to make a one one pixel transform, which you could, you know, there's definitely better ways of doing that, right? So, but you could do that, and 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 effectively, this is what is happening. So, if I then take this one pixel, and you know, maybe I want the original pixel as well. I want to kind of have both of them adding together. So this 
is then what the matrix node kind of actually does. So if I do this, if I do control C, control V, and in addition to the middle pixel and in addition to the pixel on the left, I want to have the middle pixel and the pixel to the left. So I want to move the pixel to the left over to the middle and add it to the current pixel. So if I do this, I'm taking the pixel from the left and moving it to the right, I'm adding those pixels together. So now I get something that's twice as bright and slightly move to the left. So great so far, but this is the very, very, very basic in here that what we are doing for these pixels is, is taking their value and starting to implement the, the value of its neighbors into the final value as well. So at the moment, I'm not using any of the other values nearby. They contribute, contribute nothing. But from the pixel next to it, I'm adding, adding a whole pixel value from that. So I'm just plussing them together. And then if I want to, if I don't want my image to get brighter, but I would like to get like an average value of this pixel at the one to its left, what I can do is um, I can normalize this image. So basically what my normalization means is we take all of these values, add them together, which at the moment gives me two, and then I divide my final pixel value with that. So normalize, now I get the same value as before, but if I compare this original image and this one afterwards, what you might find is that the new one is just a little bit softer. So here we had a sharp line, it's just now a little bit softer. So what we have achieved is filtering. So we're filtering, we are taking an average of two pixel values. So I'm taking average of this pixel value, whatever pixel this is, and the pixel value to its left. And as a result, because I'm comparing every pixel with itself and the one to the left, the whole image seems to slide a little bit to the right because it's from the left, right? I said right, like a pun. Anyways, so we're taking an image from the left and moving it to the right. Sweet. Um, let's look at it in a kind of a little bit more microscopic example. If you, if you kind of zoom out on this, you will see maybe uh, just checking it how visible it is on Zoom as well as like, it's, it's not really that visible in Zoom, but uh, your image will be just a tiny bit softer. Okay. So Zoom is doing its best to to compress the softness um, and to display what is happening. But effectively what I'm doing is I'm taking a pixel from the left and adding it to the pixel on the right. So let's look at some uh, more microscopic examples with some worked out examples in here as well. So here I have a tool that allows you to visualize um, what is actually happening inside of this node. So I'm going to change my layout as well to, to look a little bit more like this. I'm just going to hit home to kind of fit as much of it as I can. I'm just squeezing a little bit more in here. There we are. So what we do when we make these filters, so I have a matrix node in here, which kind of controls it. And uh, that's, you know, um, that's, that's what is happening at the moment. So we're doing a, a add and the normalize. So if I add one pixel from the, from the left and I add it to this one and I normalize, then what is actually happening is that I have created this filter and wherever I kind of go in my image, I take all of these incoming values, I add them together with an appropriate weighting. And then because I'm normalizing, I'm going to divide with the, with the final, final value. So uh, we can work through this one pixel at a time. So let's take this one here as an example. Uh, no, not that one. Let's take, um, let's take this one here as, a, as an example. It's a good example. So from this pixel down here, I'm taking zero. So I'm doing zero times zero, okay? 
Um, and from the next one, this pixels value is, is originally is, is 0 0.99, something like that. So what I'm doing is I'm still multiplying it with 0. So this is how it overlaps. So that's the filter, and that's how it overlaps. From the next one, again, taking nothing. From this one, I'm taking all of this value. It just happens to be 0. From this one, I am taking um, all of its value, which is 0 0.978. And from the others, again, taking nothing. So, but the problem is that down here, it's not really a problem, is that I've added together this, all of these values in here to do the normalization step. So down here, this is where I add all of these together. So the weighting of bottom left, bottom, bottom right, left, this pixel. So these pixels here, I'm actually taking contributions, even though here, the original value was zero, and this is like 0 0.97, my final output, which is the middle of this big square in here. So if I just show you this, so that's my final output, this square in here, it's half because I'm dividing it by two. Then if I was to kind of include more pixels in this, um, so you can see I'm blurring a little bit. Um, and again, if, if I could show you examples, this is just moving the whole image to the right by one pixel, right? So again, numerically, this is what's happening. Lots of multiplying with zeros. And at one point, we multiply with one. So effectively, what we're doing is we don't take the contribution of this pixel value. We use the contribution of this pixel value. So you can see this is 0 ends up over here. And if I do, let's say, this pixel over here, it used to be 0 0.92. But we're taking zero of this contribution. We're taking all of this contribution. So that's the contribution to this pixel in here. So you can see, you know, I'm taking the pixel from the left, moving it to the right, taking from the left, moving it to the right. And I'm doing it in this kind of uh, pun intended convoluted way uh, by taking every pixel, checking their contribution, and adding it to the final image. So this is filtering, and that's that's how it works. So. You can see here, and because I'm doing it for every pixel, it moves the whole image. So this pixel gets its value replaced by the pixel on the on the on the left. This pixel gets its value replaced by the pixel on the left. We're doing it for all of the pictures. Now you're noticing here as well is that actually something funny happens with the pixels on the edge. So for example, here, um, this one is fine. So this pixel. I'm going to replace with the pixel on the left, which is 0 0.175. And this pixel over here, 0 0.236, so it used to be 0 0.175, now it's going to be 236. That's fine too. But what about the one to the left of that? There is nothing more on the left. You know, this, this one actually breaks. Um, that's the tool I built for this. Um, so because there is nothing to the left of this, Nuke's default behavior is just duplicate whatever is your edge pixel. So again, this is something that you might have seen before if you use Nuke, which is that um, when you do transforms and merge things, so let's transform an image. If I want to move things to the right and I don't use a black outside, basically what we end up doing is stretching the last pixel, right? So this is what's happening. It's like I don't have anything else to take, so I'll just use the use whatever was the last pixel value. So the matrix node does something similar. Cool. So edges do matter. So what happens at the edge can be a bit of an issue. So coming back to this. So this is filtering. Um, I'm moving this one pixel to the right in this very inconvenient way. But um, what would happen? if I include more pixels in here. So for example, if I do this pixel and the pixel on the right and the pixel above and the pixel below. Basically, again, what we are doing is we're kind of adding all this contribution together. So I'm not, I'm not taking anything from the pixels in the corners, but, uh, but from the pixels on this cross, I'm taking the full value of that. And by adding these together and then dividing it, I'm averaging together the different values. And um, you can see from the result of this is this, this average is closer to gray, which if you look at it kind of makes sense because 
if I have a dark pixel surrounded by bright pixels, the, it will become less dark. And likewise, if I have a bright pixel surrounded by dark pixels, it will become less bright. So filtering and averaging takes out extremes. It makes signals smoother. And in other words, when we talk about images, we often use the word blurring for this. So if you just average values together, the average uh, seems to be closer to the mean value um, and uh, re reduces the variance. So, so we had quite a bit of variance in here, very dark, very bright values, but by averaging values with, with the neighbors, these then to then get removed, which is cool. So, so basically what we're doing is we're just averaging these values together. So we're adding all of those values together, all five of them, and then dividing it by that. Now, one way you could do this as well, if you know that you are going to be used five of these, you could just do 0 0.2 of each of these as well. Just to illustrate that you can. And you would actually get the same result that we had before. That's because all these five is 0 0.2s, they add up to one. So when I was normalizing earlier and uh, I was dividing it by five, if I divide every value in here by five, then, then that's the same thing. Anyways, so this is, this is how the matrix node works. Um, and that's, that's all it does. So this was a tool that I built to visualize it, but actually this, this, is, this is exactly what it does. So if I'm using these values in here, 0 0.2 and whatnot, what you should get if you zoom into this, um, let's zoom into this uh, this hand in here. What we should see is uh, before and after, it's a filtering effect. It becomes smoother. Okay, that's cool. Now, the other thing to remember is that we are doing this for every single pixel. So, what we are doing with this tool in here is we are kind of you know, starting starting with that pixel at the bottom left, which has its own issues, but effectively you go through every single pixel, every single pixel, and you take its surrounding eight pixels and the pixel itself, so it's all together nine pixels, and you contribute them together with some kind of a weighting. You could actually just make nine copies of your whole image, move those whole images by one pixel, and add them together to get the same effect. Just to illustrate that you totally can do that, um, I have done that. So let's have a look over here. So here is our original image. And here I have nine different copies of this image. So ones that um, move it by one pixel this way, one pixel that way, one pixel that way, one pixel in that direction, and that, that's the original pixel, not moving anywhere at all, and so on and so on. So I'm moving all of these different values and contributions in here. And then if I just multiply each one of them with the weighting that I want, such as like one from each of, each of the sides, and then I divide with the sum of all of these values, then again, I get the same result. So I divide with that value. So basically I'm dividing with the sum from the from from all these values, but effectively this is what's happening because you're you're moving every pixel around this pixel. You could think of it also in this way: is that maybe I'm moving the whole image that many times. So same thing, okay? Because I'm doing it for every pixel anyway. Cool. So this is filtering, and um, it is a really really sort of. Um, it's, it's one way of making making more blurry blurry looking images. That's that's cool. Um, is it any better than doing blurs using the blur node inside of Nuke? Uh, no, no, it isn't because the blur node is pretty good at making these filters for you. But the one thing that the blur node does differently is that the blur node also allows you to choose how big is the area that I'm going to uh, that I'm going to use. So for example, here, we are only looking at the nine pixels immediately around this 
this this uh, image in here. Um, but what if I want to do blur further apart? So let's take another example of this. Let's take this footage and let's look at it. And let's do a little matrix. And this time I'm going to use a different dimension for this. So I'm going to make this matrix very wide. I'm going to make it nine pixels wide and just one pixel high because um, I only want to blur horizontally. So you can see it gives me a lot of these values that I could add together. So I could do this, I could do one, 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 one. So what I'm getting now is an image that's nine times as bright as it was used to be. Whereas if I do normalize, then you can see um, I get the original value of divided by nine. And if I zoom into this, let's see if we have some place where we have some, some features where we can really see that we're only blurring in one direction. Uh, just checking for a, for a good example, maybe. Maybe this dot in here. So before this dot was a little bit soft, but if I blur it, it's blurring it left to right. Because again, what's actually happening is it's, it's taking all nine values, nine, let's do nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can do nine. There, nine values. And it's within this region it's averaging together all of these pixels so in the middle this pixel changes kind of the least but even this pixel that used to be quite dark is going to be averaged together with these pixels that are a little bit brighter so even the middle pixel here is going to get a little bit brighter because we're adding this contribution from the from the pixels around it left to right but when it doesn't affect anything uh, with regards to what's happening top and below likewise some of these pixels in here uh, like this pixel in here, it used to be very bright, but by doing this averaging of these values, this pixel is now going to get darker because we're on, on the left-hand side, these pixels are roughly the same brightness, but these are much darker. So the average value is again going to go down. So you can see this pixel is going to get darker. So at the moment, what I'm kind of really explaining to you is how blurring works. So this is how the blur node works inside of Nuke. Um, in fact, I think if we do a blur in Nuke and we just do it in the width and I'm going to use a box blur and we, let's use a width of nine, we should get exactly the same effect. So that's our matrix. So that's a blur and that's our matrix that actually makes this, makes this blur. So you can see they are identical. So exactly the same result. So this box in here basically refers to the fact that this filter that we are kind of passing along this image, if you consider its brightness, it's, it's effectively, its shape is a little bit like a box. So if we just kind of consider the brightness of, uh, of our pixels in here, so just taking one line and, and imagining, let's imagine if I draw, draw a line through here uh, and let's just make it a little bit less opaque. Uh, let's just take this stroke and make it kind of make it less opaque. I can do it over here. I think this this one here. Okay, so we're just going going through through that line in there. So just this one line. So what you might imagine is that if I was to plot uh, the brightness of these pixels, so we have some bright pixels, then a dark pixel, some bright pixels again a dark pixel and some bright pixels again. Uh, in fact, um, dark, bright, dark, 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 bright. And these ones are actually slightly brighter than that. So this is if you were to just look at the values of those pixels on, the, on that line. Um, this kind of representation, by the way, is, um, is what you can get if you look at, if you look at um, the waveform monitor inside of Nuke. So let's look at the waveform monitor, which is somewhere here, so waveform monitors give us this kind of view of pixel values from the side. At the moment, you can see it's, it's very stepped because it's individual pixels. If I zoom out, it will be a little bit clearer. Uh, and if I just look at the luminance for now. So these are the different 
different brightnesses of those pixels um, plotted here. But effectively, this is this is the brightness of those those values in here. So the filter that we are using at the moment, uh, it looks at this pixel and its surrounding pixels by an equal amount. So it's taking exactly the same amount from from each of these. So what we get is again with this, we can plot something like this. Is that it's just looking like that. So it's looking at this pixel and it's looking at these pixels around it by exactly the same amount. So it's kind of like a box filter. Whereas uh, we have other options, which is that maybe I'm more interested in the values in the middle. So uh, maybe I would like something like an exponential filter, which we don't have inside of Nuke, but where every filter closer to the middle wouldn't matter more. So we could do something like this. One, two, four, eight, 16, eight, 14, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, we have a triangle, which effectively um, would be something like this, which is that the pixel values themselves that you are using in your filter, they would just kind of form a little triangle. So we use more of the middle values, less from the edges. We also have a Gaussian, which is the most common one, which gives you this kind of very nice soft fall off as well. So these are the blur operations that you can use. Um, and the effect of them is, is, is just how much do they, do they actually include the pixels from further, further away. So box kind of includes all of them by exactly the same amount. But then what you actually get with boxes is that uh, you, you don't always get the smoothest image. So why is that? Let's have a quick look. So if I do a box filter, and let's say in my image, I have a straight line that goes down. So I just have a straight line in my image. Uh, let's look at it here. Uh, similar to this, actually, there's a good example already. But um, I just have this one pixel. And uh, let's do full hardness. And uh, let's try to draw here a relatively straight line. Okay. So I now want to make this line softer. I want to blur it left to right. If I use a box filter um, in here, let's do one, 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 one. Oops. One, 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 one. You notice the result isn't actually soft because what's actually happening at this, this, this stage is in here is that you're still using these these nine, nine pixel values. And if I just turn this off, any of these pixels in here, because they're, you know, these are roughly similar values, these are roughly similar values, but for any of these pixels in here, they just happen to be getting the same amount of, of uh, dark values and bright values. So all of these pixels, the middle value ends up being as the kind of same amount of dark and bright from both sides. So when you're doing a box filter, um, even though you're softening your image, you're filtering it, um, it might not necessarily look that much softer. Now it's my softening happening here. There. So there it is. That's because we are using the same amount in all these values. So and this is then telling us something about the shape of this filter which is that if you have a input where you have very bright highlights or very dark shadows in a area where the background is very different, they will start to recreate the shape of the filter. This shape of the filter was a box. So if I only actually had um, one little dot in here, and let me just try to draw a dot. Let's go to the next frame. So let's just try my best to draw a dot. And I'm just going to clean out some of the edges of this dot to make it more like a dot. It's surprisingly hard in Nuke to 
to draw just a single dot. There, there's a single dot. So if I blur this, I will get exactly the shape of my filter, which is this line. And this is nice because now you can actually look at what the other filter shapes look like. So if I look at this box or a triangle, you can begin to see that's what the triangle will look like. Uh, so you can imagine this is like the top of a triangle where if it's pointing towards you, it is brighter. And this is the quadratic and the Gaussian. So that's kind of how they, so Gaussian is kind of, it's using more from the middle and less from the edges. Quadratic has this kind of soft fall off everywhere. Um, so quadratic actually gives you blurrier images or like softer images than, than Gaussian. But Gaussian has this using a bit more from the middle, but less and less from the from the the further away you go. And triangle is actually like a like a like a top of a pyramid. So um, now what do we do with all this knowledge? Basically, um, you could do something like this just for fun. Um, if I have a picture like this, and I make, and this works in two dimensions as well. At the moment, we just made a one-dimensional one filter. So let's make a two-dimensional filter. And I'm just going to draw the same dot in here. So we have a little dot. So we can see there's a dot in there. Um, let's make the matrix that is much bigger. Let's do 11 by 11. It's nice to do them as, as odd numbers when you're explaining these things because the middle value will always be the same. So I have a much bigger filter now. Wow. Now, if I take the you know the middle value in here, again, I get, I get the original image. I'm just going to immediately normalize this as well. So what if, uh, because I, I said that if you have this in like one bright pixel and you try to, try to, um, if you're blurring an image, which also has this one bright pixel, it begins to give you the filter shape. Um, so what we could do is what if I just try to draw uh, a smiley face in here? So if I just draw a few of these um, dots in here, and maybe a few in here, and then try to do like a smiley face in here. So something like that. Okay. What happens is that the smiley face is upside down and wrong way around. So just to make this different from each other as well, is that, um, I mean, it's, it's hard to visualize what's happening in the screen because all, this, all these numbers are quite, quite similar looking. Um, but uh, you can just about see, you know, this is the three in here, that's these three. And this is the smile. These are the ones, that's the smile. That's the you know, value in the middle, that's the nose. And this is, this is the four over here, which is this, this four over there. So, so what's actually happening is that this is our new shape that we are moving across our image. But uh, if you keep moving it across the image and taking the middle value, and because what, we were, uh, what I was showing earlier as well is that if you're taking an image from the left, the pixel from the left, you're actually moving it to the right. In a similar way, if you're taking a value from the below, you're actually moving it above. So what has happened here is that there, this uh, pixel up here, um, let's do something like this. So I think that's roughly where we're at. So, so this pixel up here, it was looking at this value of this pixel. And because it had a one somewhere here below, you know, when it was looking at like this, that's why when, when we were kind of at the smile stage in here, this value ends up up here. But it ends upside down because we're moving the values from below above and we're moving them from left to right, which is why it flips that way as well. And this is why this is called cross correlation. So cross correlation is this process that we've been doing, which is we slide a image across another image and we look for their correlation. Actually, that's, that's the technical term for this. Um, 
in, in, in a neighborhood. But what happens is that the, it, if, you're, if your filter and, uh, and the original image are the same around, your result ends up upside down, flipped around. So convolution solves this problem by first mirroring your filter and flipping it over and then doing the cross correlation so that the, the result actually ends up upside down again. Now, this is actually something that we are looking at here now is like, in, here's a grid of numbers. Here's a 2D grid of numbers, 2D grid of values. And when we were looking at this picture in here, we are also discussing 2D grids of values. So we're discussing like, you know, what are these values now? What were they before? What are they after? Um, so, you know, each of these pixels here has a value as well. This is also a 2D grid of values. What I would maybe actually like is, is to have this 2D grid of values as a picture that I can draw rather than typing these values in here so that I could use this as a filter instead. And um, that actually exists in Nuke. And this is called convolution. So when we're looking at the matrix node, we're doing cross correlation because you're doing it this, at this numerical level. But if you want to actually get to this level where, where you're now making these filters that actually need to have some kind of a visible shape, it would be much nicer to draw this. So what we do is we use the convolve node to convolve together two images. So if I look at this, if I take the same dot and a background in here, and we draw a little picture. So I'm just going to make a constant. And I'm going to try to make a tiny, tiny constant. So let's do a crop of, um, I'm going to make it quite small. Uh, let's do 25 by 25. So uh, let's reformat this. So it's a really, really small picture here. OK. And then let's try painting on this. And let's do something like this. So let's give it some hardness as well. And I'm just going to do my initials, Alar uh, but in a kind of cool sign looking way. So A and K, how cool is that, right? Um, now, yes, amazing. So, or you could do anything else, any other picture that you want. Let's, you know, just, just, just because um, we haven't drawn a cat yet. Let's draw a cat. So here's a cat. Neat. So with this picture here, what we actually have is again, it's, it's a grid of numbers. Um, you know, these ones are zero. Uh, this one here is, um, this one is a one. And that one's like you know 0 0.6 or something like that, but really it's a grid of numbers. If you were to slide this picture across this other picture, can we use this as a filter? Can we blur our other image using this picture? And the answer is yes, yes, we totally can. And the node we use for that is the convolve node. So let's do this. This is our filter, this is our image. And it is blurrier, but actually, if you have any highlights or kind of very visible parts where one part of the image is very different from the rest, then in those areas, I've lost this dot that I drew earlier. I think it was somewhere here. Don't remember anymore. I'll just draw another dot over here. Let's make a dot. So I'll just make a dot here. And let's look at it after convolving. You can begin to see this outline of a of a cat in there. Just, just make it make it more contrasting for you guys, so it comes comes through zoom as well. So you can see I've blurred it with the shape, and because in convolution, the it gets mirrored and flipped before you do the cross correlation, then then it ends ends the right way around. So convolution is correlation where the filter ends up the, the right way around. But it's the same idea. So, so you can see 
any highlight that I have in the image actually takes a little bit of this shape of this cat. Um, is this useful? Not necessarily, but this is a technique that we could actually use um, when uh, can you map a data from a file into the node's grids values? Um, yes, in some ways, this is kind of, kind of, kind of what we're doing. Um, there is another way of doing this with, with a lot of expressions um, and a bit of bit of Python. Uh, you could um, um, you could write the script which uses the sampler um, sampler node inside of inside of uh, Tickle as well, so you can actually sample a particular pixel's value. But this does this is much easier. <laughs> so um, another place where you might have seen uh, this kind of filtering is in the Z defocus node. So Z defocus node, for example, um, works um, works the same way. So the Z defocus node just gives you extra controls, uh, whereby at the moment. Um, how much filtering we get in here depends on the size of this um, filter that goes in. It was 25 by 25. If you were doing a Z defocus instead of convolve, you can actually choose the size of your filter. So if I do Z defocus, so Z defocus, the idea with that is that you use a depth pass to blur different parts of images if they're closer or further. But if you don't have a depth pass, you can just still blur your whole image. It's just that now it gives you extra controls. So for example, here, if I use a, a filter as an input, so we use a filter and I think I have an alpha in here. Nice. So we are already getting, getting this effect of this, um, this blurring using these, these shapes. And if I do, if I do size, I can actually control the size as well. So it's kind of even even more convenient. So you can make some crazy crazy filters like that. Okay. So you can be, you can begin to see this 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 shape of the cat in here as well again. There's like some crazy crazy big cats in there, right? Um, you can use it for subliminal advertising. So you know, um, put the escape logo into into every. Every every student project that you do here, for example, so just when things go out of focus, they just kind of start subliminally saying "escape, escape, escape." Um, so that's cool. So, but uh, you know, so obviously you now realize that we actually have the tools already to do this, and these are good, and they use kind of GPU as well, so they're nice and fast. Um, so why did we kind of learn this matrix now to start with? Well, so to understand what's actually happening underneath now. Let's try something else. So, so far we've been kind of adding values together and this is kind of doing some averaging and stuff like that. But what happens if I give negative values into this? Because we already saw we can put fractional values to this, you can do 0 0.2. What happens if I do a negative value? Let's find out. So I'm just going to set these to be zero. So I'm not going to normalize. Um, and I'm just going to do this as one and this one as one, but this one I'm going to do as minus one. Interesting. Um, so turns out it's perfectly legal. You're not, you're not breaking any laws. So what this thing is actually doing now is you have created an edge detector. And you've created an edge detector that also gives the direction of the edge. So if all the values are the same, so if I look at this value in here, so all the values used to be one, one, one. So if I take minus one from one side, plus one from the other side, I get zero. What about uh, this pixel above? It's zero on this side, zero on this side. Again, I take one from the other, still zero. So you can see this is still zero. What about this one in here? So here, what we're doing is I'm taking, multiplying that side with one and that side with minus one. So there's nothing here to, to start with, but this one has minus, or like it has like 89 or something like that. So I get minus 89. So what this is telling me is that there's some kind of an edge. 
And it also tells me that this edge is one where left side is brighter, right side is darker, because I'm taking that, you know, in that direction. I always take from left to right in the, in the given case. So I also know that there's an edge and which way this edge is facing. Let's look at this on a real picture as well, um, getting the same kind of results. So uh, here I'm getting a positive value, which is telling me that the pixel on the left was darker, the pixel on the right was brighter. So if I compare this pixel and this pixel, this one is brighter, this one is darker. So if I take the negative value for this and the positive value for this, and I kind of add them together, I'm subtracting from the bright value, I'm subtract subtracting a darker value, I will have something left. So this gives me a positive edge over there. It gives me a visible edge. So you can use this to do edge detections. And so adding negative values gives you edge detectors. And now, because I told you it gives you an edge detector with a direction, uh, you can also check the directions in the other direct, uh, side. So basically, if, if this one was one and this one was minus one, so you can see now that's the bright edge on that side. So we can find where that edge is. Um, but also, if you don't care about which edge you're looking at, what if I take it from both sides and I subtract them from the middle value? So then you could keep sort of subtracting these. And let's see, the middle now has to be four. You're taking the values from all around. So you can start building these edge detectors using this. So we can subtract values in addition to adding them, because subtracting is just adding with a negative value. Um, much harder to translate that into a picture for the Convolve node. So, and I don't think whether, I don't know if it will even allow you to do that. But, um, but here we kind of, we've, we've done an edge detection. And you can see I've, I've included four in here because I've taken four different edges. I've subtracted one from, one amount from that side, one amount from that side, one amount from that side, it's just so that it would pivot still around zero. But if I wanted to put the original pixel value back to this, I could do that. I could add five. So now what it's doing, it is doing an edge detection. So it's looking where there is a sharp difference between a bright edge and a dark edge. And it's adding this difference to your current pixel value, it is creating a sharpening effect. So the pixels that used to have similar pixels around them, nothing happens to them. It's like uh, I'm taking away blue and then I'm putting black blue still the same. It's only if there is an actual difference in the original image. So for example, here is a bright pixels on one side, dark pixels on the other side, and the middle is kind of you know, something in between. By doing this, Subtracting, making the darkers even darker and the brighters even brighter. So we're making this kind of sharpening effect, really intense sharpening effect for the moment, but you know, just to illustrate the point that you can. So filters allow you to do more than just um, just uh, softening. Let's check there's another another question in here. Um, cool. Uh, good questions in here. Is this process used uh, during motion tracking? Um, some of this, um, actually, yes. So this shifting pixels left to right um, is um, is part of the process um, that you can use to to tell um, if you're trying to match one image on top of another image, and by doing this subtraction. Basically, it also tells you the gradient. It's like it tells you in which direction things are different. So you might need to move, move them further in that direction. Um, anyways, what it shows is that we can actually have quite a few different types of filters giving, with, giving us different uh, blurring effects, um, different blurs, sort of uh, darken effects, sharpening effects, edge detections, let's call them that. So one cool th thing we could do with this is, um, is the following. Let me just find another script in here. 
um, just to kind of put it into, into, into an example. So for example, here, we have this, um, this um, spaceship flying into this shot. So I'm just going to uh, concentrate on that actual part in there where we, where we have the spaceship. So let's see how that works. So here we have a little spaceship car and um, um, ah, there's another question about color matrix, which is a different topic. Um, it's a very different topic. I will, I will answer that uh, in, in a moment. Um, so uh, let's, let's, let's look at this one more time. So anyways, so let's move this down here. So just to show you another kind of fun example of, of why you might want to do edge detect. Um, so here I have a picture of some, some noise. So here's noise. And, um, and I'll soften it, I'll, I'll blur it a little bit just to make it less you know, high frequency. And that here what we've done is uh, I've subtracted the pixel from the left from the one from the right. So what you could do is instead of using a transform and a from, you could actually use a matrix as well. So why we might want to do this is for this reason. So for example, here is all the, if I just shuffle out the red channel in here and I'll do a matrix and I just want to do the pixels on the left and the pixels on the right. What this gives me is the left and right difference in my image. Now I could actually, maybe I might want to use a little bit more difference from the top and bottom as well. And just a little bit more from the, from the side. So it's, it's, so we're kind of doing a little bit of, uh, of the differences in, in diagonals as well. So differences in diagonals and difference horizontally, but effectively it's, it's giving me left and right difference here. So on one hand, so one hand I have, um, positive values on the other, I have negative values. So what this effectively tells me is like, it's, it's facing that way, or it's facing that way, or it's facing towards me. So I'm kind of thinking of this, this noise now as if it's like a bump map. And, uh, and this tells me in, in which direction things on this bump map are looking. And I could do similar things with my up and down view as well. matrix just to illustrate and let's do that so let's do my minus one again there's there are reasons why you do care about whether you do them top to bottom or bottom to top this is noise i don't care um so let's say we do this for for the green green values in here as well so top to bottom and left to right and then I kind of add them together. So I get this top to bottom, left to right view in here. And I could use this to move pixels in my image up and down randomly by this amount. Um, yes, bump maps. Um, if you actually want to see another, another uh, related tutorial, um, I will give you a link, a link in the in the in the end but uh, what this now allows us to do is that um, i've done some kind of um, glow effects in here so here is some glow effects uh, just using some some noise and glow nodes and stuff like that but it would be nicer if this had a bit of a heat haze feeling as well so by selecting just areas where i want this to happen which is just over there just behind those um, thrusters we can convert those red and green values to forward U and forward V vectors that the eye distort node can use to push pixels around. So the red ones will move things left and right. The green ones will move things up and down. So what this will give you is this kind of a nice warp effect as if there is, um, as if there is like a sort of haze or, or something like that happening there. So you can see a bit of a, Bit of a glow effect happening there, which is cool. So, just because you know that's that's nice when it does that. So let's do a little 
little ping pong bounce in here, see if it if it plays back. Cool. So just another kind of example that by using these matrix nodes, you can do other things. You, you, you don't have to just blur things uh, because we already have good blur nodes inside Nuke anyway. Um, and if you want to blur things with a kind of custom filter, then we have the Convolve node or the Zeti Focus node, which is also really, really good and they're GPU accelerated. But you can use um, matrix node to do edge detection type of things. And edge detection is also, we have a node for that. But um, oh, this is this is quite annoying to look at. <laughs> it's going to be with as a repeat uh, playing forward. Just give it give it a bit more time. Um, but um, but uh, it is what you use this for. So basically, here we're using it to kind of create some distortion effect, um, and. Um, we're make, using it to make a map where that uh, idistort node could use afterwards. So there's another question here about uh, the color matrix. Um, the color matrix is a different node. And basically what the color matrix does um, is something completely different. Um, let me just show it in another, another script in here. Um, the color matrix, gives you, and unfortunately, the color matrix inside of Nuke is, um, is um, three by three instead of four by four. But um, the color matrix does something else. The color matrix takes every single pixel in your image, this red, green, and blue, and um, it represents this red, green, and blue just because you asked this question, so I'm happy to show you. So it represents this red, green, and, red, green, and blue as, um, as if the red, green, and blue actually represent positions in space. So I can just make really, really small points for you. So this is all the all of the pixels in this image. Can I make them really small? Smaller still. Uh, maybe just even a bit smaller than that. So if all the pixels in my image were colors, and those colors in my image represent a position in space, then the color matrix allows you to do transformations on those um, values uh, for the red, green, and blue. So for example, if you only did the diagonal, uh, you could make the red twice as bright. So now it is twice as red. Um, so in here, we're, we're effectively multiplying red, green, and blue. Uh, but basically what's happening in here is a matrix and vector multiplication, which is a big topic for another day. Um, the reason why you would use this is um, if you start combining these other values in here, in addition to just doing the middle, which basically gives the scale of the red, green, blue, you could, um, for example, combine the upper quadrant in here um, to figure out um, an angular connection between those colors. So you could um, represent some of these things as rotations. So if you have a normal map, you can write, rotate your normals by rotating these colors by linking them to a something like an axis node, and in your axis node, you could you could look at the first 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 uh, few few values in here. So, for example, you can see if I rotate things in X or in Z, this is the values that I could put into into my into my color matrix. So, color matrix is actually doing a transformation in, um, let's see if this works. Does it work? It does not work. I think you have to do them one by one. Yeah. Yeah. So it allows you to, for example, rotate your colors in in Z. 
which isn't necessarily massively meaningful if you rotate your colors in Z, because like, what does that actually mean? So you can see my image is getting a little bit, sort of doing a hue, hue rotation in here. But if you actually look at this as the, as the position to points, what you should see is some rotation happening here for this, for these values in here. So I'm rotating those color, color values and now these color values represent position. So I'm rotating them in the space. But actually, yeah, you're, you're doing like a hue rotation. Anyways, so color matrix node, totally different topic uh, for another time. Uh, useful for when you're dealing with normals and figuring out which way things are pointing. So um, yeah, useful, useful to know too. Cool. Um, that's that answers that question. Um, cool, so groovy. Um, yes, yeah, so we saw displacement maps earlier, and um, and just the one last one that I kind of wanted to show you. Uh, let me just show you this. Um, so there's some other tutorials that deal with filtering. Um, I have one about uh, digital painting and spatial frequencies. So they look at the filtering aspect in a kind of more global fashion. This was looking at in this very, very granular fashion is like what happens for this pixel when you filter it. Uh, spatial frequencies explains what happens to a whole image when you're doing filtering. So this kind of brightness differences that I was talking about earlier, what happens if you actually make images smoother or, or less smooth. So what actually happens when you filter images just from the blurring point of view, nothing to do with edge detections in here. But another one that you might want to look at as well is um, is if you go to search in the Scape Studios one, I think it's called lighting. Uh, so my relighting hacks, um, we are actually doing things in here as well, which is, um, this is this is all based on other tutorials from other people as well, but we are using the same matrix nodes um, to again create create this left and right difference and up and down difference for an image based on its brightness. And once you have the left and right and up and down difference, you can also from those you can figure out is it is something pointing towards you or not towards you, because. If there is no difference, then it's pointing towards you. So you can figure out the blue channel out of the red and green as well to get an actual red, green, blue uh, normal pass uh, the way that you're expected to use to used to seeing it. And then this normal pass you can actually use to relight two D elements um, such as uh, this blood splatter in here just by adding adding a bit of noise to it, uh, or this smoke plume. Um, by, by kind of um, making it look as if, as if there's some kind of specularities and, and things. So, so other other resources to look at um, from us as well. And obviously, the best thing is to just come and study with us because then then you can learn these things from you know us directly and ask us questions more often. Um, but yes, um, that's everything I wanted to say.